Hello and welcome to that Eurovision podcast, bringing you Eurovision with a slice of life. My name is Janek and I'm your host for today. With the up and coming new edition of the Junior Eurovision Song Contest, today we'll be looking back at one of the previous editions of the contest. A very great year, a very weird year because most of the uh, ch- children there are singing about uh, climate change, but with, uh, but yeah, we are t- of course talking about Junior Eurovision 2019. And uh, what would it be if I was here talking by myself? I have some guests here, and they are. Hi, it's Jazzy. I'm back on another podcast. I feel like I've been on quite a few recently. Um, but yeah, I'm back talking about another topic. And I'm really excited to talk about Junior Eurovision for once because it's rolling around again, and it's something that I don't feel like we talk enough about so yeah i'm really excited to get into today's topic hi it's tim here it is very weird not being on the hosting seat for once again ever since i started doing the podcast again um i'm great uh as jazzy said i'm also excited about junior year vision because i've tried to go ever since i've started like reporting on it and obviously the pandemic stopped and i was in paris last year so I'm very, very excited to go and talk about this because this is actually my first ever Junior Eurovision that I've attended. So I'm going to let Yannick get on with it. Thank you very much. We have amazing people here talking about uh, 2019. So at the beginning, we like to do a bit of an intro about the contest since I am your uh, Polish uh, uh, editor for the for the site, so I have more uh, insight about this uh, this year. Uh, so after Roxana Bengel won in 2018, we are uh, in a question who will be hosting. Uh, there were a few countries that wanted to host. Uh, uh, one of them being Kazakhstan, and this year's uh, host of the 2022 edition, Romania. But uh, at the end, we uh, Poland w- was announced to host. Then there were some questions about who will be, which city will, will be uh, talking, will be going to for the contest. Uh, uh, when the list uh, came out, a, a bit of shock because when we talk about Poland, a lot of people are talking about Warsaw, but Warsaw is not very suited for contests like that. Uh, so then the, we. There was a question between Gliwice and Szczecin. Gliwice, I think, is a, is a city that a lot of people don't uh, know about when it comes to Poland. Szczecin was maybe more, but uh, not much, uh, not that popular uh, with uh, tourists. They will go to Krakow, they will go to uh, Trumiasto, which is Dynes Gdynia, uh, support, but yeah, Szczecin and Gliwice. At the, at the end, we went to Gdivice for the contest. Uh, the contest, the contest uh, had uh, 19 participants. Uh, we had the return of Spain, and we said our goodbye for that year to Israel and Azerbaijan. Uh, the contest was hosted by uh, three people. First was Alexander Shikora, who is a TV presenter. Uh, he became one, uh, the, one of the commentators for uh, our contest f- since 2021 because the old one got fired, but that's a, another drama that I won't be talking about. Uh, he also hosted the Shatsana uh, uh national final this year. Uh, uh, the second host was Irna Wakowska, who is an actress and a ballet dancer. You can know her from hosting the contest, but also she hosted a lot of national finals for Poland. Uh, and of course, we had Roxana Wengel, who was uh, the green room host. Uh, so we had three interval acts in the uh, in the contest. We had the uh, Roxana Wengel priest from her winning song. We have Jana Wakowska's dance, of course, the Share the Joy common song that uh, happened in the middle of the the, the, the contest. Uh, so our first discussion will be what did you think about the hosts? What, what did you like about them? What 
were some parts of you that didn't like? What were the interval arcs for you? Uh, did you like them? Or you thought they were missing something? And of course, the stage design is a big topic that I want to tackle as well. Um, I really, re I think I want to start off by saying, going from the beginning of the contest saying I really, really like the flag ceremony. I felt that was like very professional and almost like something you would see in the adult contest, but just with kids. And I really, really like that. I think the stage design, it worked really, really well for the flag ceremony. I think it, the stage design was almost like a Eurovision stage and yeah, it all really came together and it was all really nice. The opening act with dancers was a really entertaining act and I felt it was really engaging for like kids that were watching and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the hosts, Ida, Alexander and Roxana were enthusiastic and they were engaging as hosts. I really liked that Roxana was involved. I do love that typically with Junior Eurovision, they get an artist that was involved in that their junior Eurovision past and um, they get them into the green room which I really really like because I feel like it puts the other children at ease because Roxana has been through what they're going through right now and like to them she's like relatable and she can almost offer them advice and just put them at ease with everything that they're going through in that moment um I thought her reprise was a really, really good reprise um, as an interval act. I also really enjoy, like, this is something I really, really enjoy about Junior Year Vision. I really like that they do the common song. I think Share the Joy was a really, really good common song. Um, I, I, I listened to it for a few times after the contest. It was really catchy. Um, I love that the common song brings all the contestants from all different nations together. I've, I've always wondered if I'd want something like that for the adult Eurovision, but for the children, for the junior Eurovision, I do feel like it's really important because like these children are learning about different cultures, they're learning about each other and they're performing together on one big stage and I do think that's a really, really nice touch and I'm going to um, let Tim talk about his thoughts now. <laughs> I mean, for me, okay, this was the first junior Eurovision I've ever attended, like, ever uh live it to like you obviously know that um not a known city so you know it's it's a small town with a good arena so and i think the arena worked on its favor and in terms of the stage because that stage is humongous like when you're there and you just see how it all spreads out it looks very perfect and for the host itself i love the balance of uh of all the three, um, you know, Alexander just doing the, you know, the main bits along with Ida and Ida being multi-talented as she is. She also did a part of the interval act and the, oh, her ballet skills was breathtaking. And obviously we can't have the junior year vision without the previous winner. In this case, it was Roxy and Roxy was a very lovely host and uh, the fact she was in the green room just cheering all of the participants on there. It was very, very great to see. And, you know, f for a contest that Poland hosted for the very, f well, f hosted in like, um, I think a very long time or the very first time. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Um, they've done a great job with everything. And the process was very smooth in terms of, hosting the contest it might be in a known a known city but it worked out very well for them and i'm kind of excited to see how this will go on just to echo our team uh, poland has hosted a few uh, eurovision related uh, competitions we hosted young musicians and we also uh because we won like a few times i don't remember how much how many exactly we also had in poland uh, a few editions of uh, young dancers, but that when it comes to the singing uh, competitions, we it was our first time because we didn't have one, one before. So as a poll, I am more uh, crit I am more critically, I am more of a criticizing uh, point with the host and the script because I, I thought the script was, I know it's a children's show, but the time, sometimes they were behaving too childish, even for a childlike. So I feel like there were, for, we turn it down next year. So that's, that's a, that's a great way of 
uh, of doing something uh, uh, better than uh, the previous times. When it come, I I loved Roxana. I thought she was a great uh, television host. When it comes to Alexander, I thought he was okay. I I am nitpicky about his English a bit, but that's 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 just me being criticized of what we are doing. And Ida, I know being excited about doing well is very very relatable, but sometimes emotions are too much, and I understand that especially when it comes to the the levels part was what she did. She went very fast through all the uh, televotes. I thought too fast for for me. I thought she could like maybe slow down, but she was an amazing performance. Uh, she had an amazing performance uh, during interval art. I am really, I was really happy with that. Share the joy as a banger. It was uh, amazing. I I am happy that they uh, brought Grammy for this. Uh, to create such an amazing song for the kids to sing together, and Roxana uh, amazing. For the for, when I w- was watching the show, I thought for a, a bit part of it she was lip syncing a bit, but she was just perfect. She is perfect life, so I am happy that they gave her a uh, stage to reprise her winning song. So with that, uh, oh, let's let's move on. Uh, so w- when we of course, talk about songs. We talk about staging, interacts, but this year, especially with uh, Adult Eurovision, a big topic was postcards for the uh, for the songs because they were they were very specific postcards this year. But I thought uh, the postcards for the Junior Eurovision does not were very very nice, and I would like to know your opinions about them. So I really. So I really, really liked the postcards for this junior Eurovision. It was like almost the kids like looking over Poland, like seeing what they could learn through a telescope, which I thought was like a really, really nice touch. It shows that even though the kids are junior Eurovision, they're still educating them, still being educated. Um, um, it was nice to see them like looking over at what local Polish people do in like their everyday lives and seeing like traditional Polish activities. Um, and we got to see lots of different parts of Poland in the postcards too, which I thought was really, really nice. And it's always something that I really like in the adult contest where they show off like, like different parts of the host country. I really, really do like that. Um, I think it helps like the viewers, not just the acts, but the viewers learn more about like the culture and, what activities they do in that said host country. So yeah, I thought the ho- the postcards were really really nice, and I really liked that um, when like the indent for like when the song started that you saw like a picture of the child and like them smiling and like I really really like that. It, it makes the songs more personable and helps you get to know the artist a little bit even before they perform. So I really really like that. Really, yeah, it's really nice. Um, I have nothing to add here, actually. I would echo Jazzy's thoughts where we got to see a bit of Poland through the postcards uh, and the fact that, you know, they made this very interactive, you know, even though the participants weren't able to fly out and record the postcards on the location, you know, they were still involved. Like they were, they recorded it on the week that they were there and, you know, did the whole green screen were just like waving along with their hand kind of thing. But you know what? Personally, I it looks really nice. It looks very pretty. And the end result looked very amazing on screen. And, you know, the fact that the acts were involved, that's the main thing really. So it's 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 a great thing for me. Yeah, I think there's nothing else to add about this. Uh, I just want to add one one thing though, uh, because I just didn't talk about it. So one of the uh, points of the postcards were to show up. Uh, there was uh, th- th- this group of uh, older men who were playing kids games, and I think that it was a very nice way to show that hey, these games are uh, also accessible for adults, not only for the children like but i thought the, it was very cleverly done uh, but also i thought that this hashtag hashtag football hashtag something was a bit cheesy but i, I other than that i thought the the postcards were done uh, 
perfectly. I, I when I talk about uh, postcards for new revision, I really like to bring out the 2019 po- uh, junior podcast because they are one of the examples of how you can how you shall do a post uh, a great postcard for your artist. So with that done, I think this is the best way to just to move on and talk about songs because it's a song contest. So give me your few favorites of the of the songs that you are your favorites and you remember the most from the contest. So I usually, when I'm asked to do this, I usually give a top three, but this isn't really top three in order. This is just my the three that I picked out when... I was re-watching the contest, so the first one that I, and this is still a song I listen to today because it is a ba- it is a bop. I absolutely love it, and I think last year's Junior Eurovision made me fall in love with it all over again. That's probably, maybe half the reason I still listen to it, but it's France's Carla with Bim Bam Toi. I just think this is so fun and enjoyable. Uh, this, and again, as I've mentioned, this is still a song I listen to now. Uh, it's definitely one of my favourite junior Eurovision songs of all time. I just think, I really like, I think France, since they've joined junior Eurovision, they just get it. Like, I love every single one of their entries. I, I They're so fun, enjoyable. Their performers are so engaging. And Carla is obviously no exception to that. She had, like her her performance is so full of fun and so full of personality and the backdrops and the lyrics popping up on the LEDs and the little memorable dance routine team just make this so enjoyable to watch and just leaves me with a smile on my face. I'm so glad this managed to do as well as it did, even though it was really early on in the running order. And she kind of proved that second to go isn't always a cursed place in the running order. And yeah, I again, I just adore this. I think it's amazing. Um... The second song that I have pinpointed is from the Netherlands, Matthew with Dan's Met Yao. I may have completely botched that, so I will apologise to any Dutch people right now if I have. Um, Again, this is quite similar to France in a way that this is just catchy and it's easy to sing along to when you're watching the contest, even though I don't actually know Dutch very well. Um, this, This was, again, performed very well and... You could see his charisma shining through in the performance and he was a little showman, like he got the crowd going, which I don't think was particularly easy in this junior Eurovision. So that was something that I noticed. Um, I also think he is someone that I could see representing the Netherlands in the adult contest when he's old enough, because I think even after the contest, we've seen him around in the junior Eurovision circuit. He did the promo video for junior Eurovision 2020 during Eurovision Shine a Light, um, which I thought was really interesting, really nice to see. And he also announced the points in 2021. So Again, he's someone that's stuck around in the in the in the junior Eurovision circuit. So I won't be surprised that when he's old enough, if he isn't already, to see him maybe venture into the adult world of Eurovision. Which, and I think the last song that I do want to talk about is Anna Kearney's Banshee from Ireland. This is breathtaking. It's stunning. Anna's voice is so pretty and works so well with the song. The stage show and the outfit also really worked. They added to the ethereal Celtic vibe they were going for with this song. Um, I think this and Albania are probably the most underrated songs in the 2019 contest, in my opinion. Although I do really like Portugal as well. Like, Johanna is an absolute queen and she rocked that song. Um, But more on Ireland, I... No, sometimes fans for the Irish language doesn't always work in songs at Junior Eurovision. Uh, some have put that down as a reason that it may not do, Ireland may not do as well in Junior Eurovision as they should. However, I do actually feel for this song, it really, really did work. It was really nice to listen to in this song. And it just added to that Celtic ethereal vibe. Um, I wish... Um, Ireland were more appreciated in junior Eurovision they're often quite high in my top but I don't feel like they often get the love they deserve and yeah I want to see more songs like Banshee in junior Eurovision or even Ireland sending a song like this because I do think it would be it's very traditionally Irish and I don't think that's something that we've seen Ireland do in even in adult Eurovision 
for a, like a very long time. And when they did it in adult Eurovision back in the 90s, it really, really worked for them, like when they sent the voice. So, yeah. Um, yeah, that's just my thoughts on my top three. All right, then I am going to echo a jazzy. I will give you a top three, but I will not give them an order, just to be fair, because they're kids. So, um, in my th- in in my first one, I want to talk about an entry that's very underrated, and that Sofia Ivanko from Ukraine with the Spirit of Music. I really loved how unique this is to the competition in 2019, and I really loved the. It was a whistle tone, like it was the. I really butchered that. I know, but. Yeah, it was the way she was just whistling when she was singing the song. And the camera work on that staging when we got to the bridge and towards the end of the song where she where she was like turning and turning and spinning like Kaynez. Uh <laughs> Sasha be shook in that one. Uh and, and the camera work that they did with that was very awesome and you know I still listen to it to this day and I can't get the whistling out of my head. I think if you can even call that whistling. Um, all right. Second entry that I want to talk about. You'd be surprised by this. Um, it's Karina Ignatian from Armenia. Colors of your dream. Okay. Let me tell you about this. Armenia actually selected their representative via um Depi Evretisil Jr. So basically the junior version of their national final. And uh, I thought another entry was going to win in this one. And okay, I'm not surprised by it. It sounded so amazing. They went all out on the staging. And it I was blown by Karina's vocals and the and the stage presence that she had in Glivice. It was very fantastic to see. And she's always smiling and bubbly when she was performing. What really surprised me though is that um this is Armenia's worst result in the contest. Ninth. They've been participating for a very long time in the Junior Eurovision Song Contest, and their worst result is ninth. How does that happen? And it's still amazing. And I still think that this is robbed. Um, but, you know, Karina is nearly at the age where she's eligible for Eurovision. So, you know, if you want your redemption era, please come over. We'd love to see you. Um, and I am very excited about that. But anywho, um, on to my last one. Um, the last one, if you followed me on Twitter in 2019, then you'd you'd be surprised if I didn't say this. But um, the third entry I'm going to talk about is Mila Moskov from North Macedonia with Fire. Okay, earlier in the year, you know, um, North Macedonia had their redemption with... Um, Tamara Tadevska with Proud. So I'm guessing Macedonia Television just wanted to, you know, make sure that they're in par with that and pick Mila. And boy, when I saw this, this gave me winner vibes. And the fact that North Macedonia finally got the recognition it deserved in the competition, this just blew me away. And you know what, when she performed it, when I saw it on stage in Glivite, I was just like, raising my Macedonian flag like there's no tomorrow. Like, if you actually watch the video, like, there is this shot, it's like a long shot, where the the camera's at the back of the arena, and you'll just see a Macedonian flag just, like, floating around at the corner. Yeah, that was me, that was me. I had some help from the crowd to, like, lift it up. Mila was very great, and the fact that this is like the second best result for North Macedonia. It really impresses me. And Mila is eligible for Eurovision. So if you're wanting to come back, please do really miss you. And I hope you, you know, turn Macedonia's fortunes around and bring them to the final. And that's my top three. Uh, thank you about that. Uh, so I want to do top three, but I'm going to do top four instead. But before I am uh, going to talk about my top four, I just wanna, want to shout out some songs that I won't talk about much, just that I also enjoy. So I want to shout out North Macedonia, 
because uh, that was her first expression during her performance were amazing. Uh, of course, I want to uh, shout out Ukraine because they always, always are one of my favorite songs. Uh, Netherlands, this song grew a lot on me. And last, uh, last two shoutouts are Portugal and Italy, especially Portugal. That song is uh, such an ear ir- that I can't just, uh, just, just, just get out of my head. So I am going to talk about four songs that I really enjoyed from this year. I am. As as Jazzy and team, I'm not going to uh, do it in order. I'm just looking at the running order right now and going from top to bottom. So first song I want to talk about is France. Bim Bam Twa, I remember when this song came out, I was it was instantly one of my favorites from that year. And of course, it's a Barbara Pravi written song, so of course it must be good. It, uh, so I am... Just echoing what Jazz said about it, such a such an amazing performance and song is very very catchy. I, if I remember correctly, that song went viral on TikTok like two years after it released. So go get that coin, you deserve it. Um, next song, I w- I am very surprised we didn't talk about this song. It wasn't uh, mentioned by Spain. Melanie is. She's an she's a gem. She really is a gem. She's such an she has such uh, great energy, and she always uh, talks greatly about Eurovision and Junior Eurovision. And I can see her going back to the contest. Maybe I, if I remember correctly, she is uh, she uh, gets sixteen years old next July, so she w- wouldn't be a, a, a eligible for Bain Donor twenty twenty three. But 2024, maybe. I thought that song was amazing. Her voice is just the pipes on this 12 year old at the time. And from what I know, she even improved uh, from from that year. So she went. She she is better now. So I'm very very happy for uh, for for Spain for doing well. Finally, doing well. Like they came, they they came back and started doing well for uh, in junior Eurovision. And ever since they came back, I think there is no uh, Spanish song that I dislike. There, uh, so I am excited for uh, next for this year, not next year, this year's uh, Spanish entry. Uh, and of course, I have to talk about Poland because. Superhero is one of my favorite winners uh, from Junior Eurovision. Like bias aside, I thought uh, it was one one of my favorites when uh, the music video came out. Vicky is such an amazing performer. I I I like to uh, like to imagine that uh, we would have won even if not uh, the televoting system wasn't like as it was. But it's Junior, you can't just think what, what would have, have happened. Uh, I am just glad that Kazakhstan is win, but I won't uh, throw fate about, uh, at the song right now. But Superhero is one of the examples uh, of what I want in uh, for us in uh, adult uh, competition as well. Like, the quality we bring to the junior parts, junior edition of the songs, the contest, why we are not bringing the same thing with uh, the adult Eurovision. Like I know, things aside, like uh, like uh, our television that's being horrible, and people don't want don't, don't want to uh, work with it. But I just I want us to do well in the adult song, adult song contest, especially after this year's twelfth uh, place. Uh, so I am very excited for for uh, Laura this year. I hope they kind of revamp uh, the song a bit, uh, so it feels more modern. I, I can see that it was very rushed because I because I, she had a little time to uh, to to work for the song. So I am very excited that the revamp is happening. Uh, but yeah. As a superhero was written by the same people who wrote like anyone I want to be, 
and Empire Slater for Alicia. But so I am, and uh, so I, so of course, bring them back for the adult song contest so they can ra- make something great with, with, uh, with adult Eurovision. And last sound uh, I want to shout out is, of course, Armenia. I am still mad that this, this is Armenia's worst result, despite there's a lot of worse songs from them than than, uh, than what Carlos Ogrodzin was. I thought Carlos Ogrodzin was amazing. She has an amazing voice. She, and the performance was very, very great. Uh, and uh, I really hope she come back, comes back for the other television as I... A team said she is eligible for a 2023 edition, so maybe, maybe she can come back. So, yeah. So let's move on for a quick rapid fire round. Uh, what did you f- do? You think Poland should change in uh, hosting contest if we ever win again, or oh, either adult or junior division? Um. I think her Poland host a really, really good show for Junior. And I think if like everything was done really, really well, it was all very slick, all very professional. Um, I think the host could be a little more, like, a little bit more personable. Um, like, it, it seemed very, it, very slick and very professional. It didn't seem like there was very many room for jokes or humour in the script and I think that's more to do with script right right in the house. Um I do like there to be some jokey moments in the script, um, just because it like breaks down Eurovision. I don't think it's as much a problem in junior Eurovision because I think for junior they like everything to be done quite quickly because they're kids and holding their attention, etc. But I think for the adult contest you would need a few more like just a couple of jokes in there just to like break the tension and also just get the audience laughing i i do like that personally in the script um i i did really really like however how they just kept the show moving and everything was really slick and professional um something i did kind of notice as well is that the interval acts weren't a hundred percent like i like that in any show in any Eurovision, to there, there to be just one interval act that is like very traditional, and I feel like that was missing in this junior Eurovision. Like I would like to have seen something more traditionally Polish as an interval act. I know there was like a dance act, but I like there to also be a singing act. I know Roxana, but obviously she was just like the last year's winner, and I. I felt like this in junior Eurovision was actually improved on in 2021 when they got Barbara Pravi to do an interval act singing her runner-up song, Voila. Um, it would have been nice to see someone like Tulia, who had represented them like the year before in the main contest, come in, especially as they had been a traditional Polish act, just come in. And I just like to see an interval act which shows off Poland and show, like, like shows off the country, shows off the music industry. I think one of the, the the one of the best contests for this actually was actually in adult Eurovision. It was twenty seventeen. We saw a lot of like Ukrainian uh, artists, a lot of elements come into it. Saw so same in Lisbon as well. Um, I just really like that in, in the interblack in the opening act to there be a traditional feel, and I felt like that wasn't always there in this in this contest. So it's just something that. I know it's but it's definitely something that could have been improved on. But overall, this was a really good, slick, professional production, and they did most things very well. It's just nitpicking. I don't know what else poll uh, uh, TVP could change in terms of hosting the contest. For me, they've done twenty nineteen to the best of their abilities, which is fun because. You know, it was a, it was a great hosting of theirs, and I feel like they've done such a great job. You know, despite the fact that they've had less than a year to actually um, prepare and actually put on the event. And but the only thing I will change is that um, there are other cities in Poland. 
um i would have preferred i would have preferred krakow so maybe that's the only thing i could suggest in the future maybe go somewhere where it's easier to get to like you know gluvitz it was a bit of a hoop to get to like um i had to go through katowice and then took a taxi from there it's just a whole lot of faff i think if we're somewhere where it's easier to get to i think that would have been great but you know the show was sold out anyways (laughs) <laughs> like th- with those tickets and with those prices yeah i'd be surprised if it wasn't sold out so yeah i think have it in a different city like you know as much as it was nice or if you have like a stadium with a with a roof that can actually handle the equipment even better yeah i think the the city charles was very weird because Livica is very, very, very small. This isn't as uh, popular and very as big as other cities. Like, like you mentioned, Katowice. Katowice has two arenas that can uh, handle uh, Eurovision or Junior Eurovision much better than Livica did. But I, I l- like, uh, and the, of course the co- uh, the commute to uh, Katowice is uh, miles better than. Uh, to Gliwice, but as I said, you have to, have to go to Katowice, then go to Gliwice because of uh, not met many connections to, to the city. Like, I, I don't know if Krakow would have been better because it's so far away from the, the, the rest. Uh, not, not not far away, but it's 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 great commune, but I don't think it's uh, as great as maybe other uh, cities. Uh, I want to echo uh, Jazzy with the script. I thought the script was too slick. I there was no room for improvisation sometimes. Like when one thing I thought was very weird and very scripted was when uh, the there was the voting time, and they're like, "Oh, everything can change." and uh, immediate uh, camera angle to Roxana. I know what you think. I was I was in this place last year. I thought that that was very very odd for them to do. And uh, overall, I thought maybe for the next editions, if we get host again, just make just let other people host. Like Ida and Alexander are in very much every possible way uh, in are the Eurovision NFs and uh, Eurovision uh, contest. Like, Ida was uh, a part of next year uh, because she did uh, a dance while Alicia was singing. Like, she she hosted our NFs this year. So, like, let other people also have this experience with hosting or doing interval acts. And this rotation is healthy for, uh, for, uh, for, our, for fans because... I when I saw uh, during the uh, national final, I was like, "Why they are they are here again? Like, let some other people come and have their opinion because they could be biased uh, for the for the uh, for the uh, people they already know. Like, they were for Ra- Rafael. They were like, oh, Rafael, you were amazing. I know w- w- what happened to uh, in Turin. So I like the." That this talk they did in the national panel this year. So before we do our outros, maybe uh, do do you have any last uh, words? Last maybe something we want to uh, say or? Um. Yeah. Um. I would just say that this is a really strong contest. I really really enjoyed watching it back because I I don't think I've really done many junior Eurovision rewatches before. Um. And this has me really excited for the upcoming 2022 contest and what that will bring for us. So, yeah, it's been really, really nice to go have a little look back. TVP has been very lucky because of the fact that they were able to host two contests in a row. Well, two junior contests in a row. And all I have to say about that is I wish that they're able to host it again because it was just that good like you know if there are there there are certain broadcasters that do their job very well in terms of hosting like um poland is one of them like 
when they got given a task, they do it with professionalism. They do it within the allotted amount of time. No issues ends up being great. So, you know, if Poland wins again, we know we will be in safe hands for junior Eurovision and potentially Eurovision if that does come into play in the future. I want to echo what Jazzy said that 2019 is a very strong year. Recently, me and my friends, we were doing uh, rewatches of all the junior, junior uh, editions and we did uh, some rankings on Twitter. And I am so happy that I could uh, watch 2019 again because I was tired of, of the other contests having one good song and the rest is, what is this? What is this mess? So I am very happy to be revisiting 2018 again because of the quality of the of the year, and yeah, I, I really hope we, we could host uh, Advert Eurovision soon, uh, so we could see how we would handle the hosting uh, with the uh, adult uh, edition. I don't know. So this should be uh, everything for us today. Uh, and of course, don't forget to follow us on social media at that Euro Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, also follow that Eurovision site for the latest news at, at the Euro site on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And of course, visit our uh, fan page uh, at Eurovision site.com. Thank you for listening and see you in the next one. Bye bye.